Hello and welcome once again to Fair Tax Power Radio. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Malero. And we are the, the Fair, Fair Tax, Tax guys. guys. And we're going to have some fun today. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, what are we going to title this episode, Bob? I'm going to title this episode, Crazy Things You Are Liable to Hear During This Upcoming Political Season. It, it, tis the season there, for There will be no chicanery. end. <laughs> We've yeah. got enough material to go forever on this one, but we'll try to keep it uh, <laughs> keep it limited to uh, to the fair tax. Yeah. So the scenario here is that, uh, especially on the local level, um, any candidate that's running for office, whatever whatever level office, county commission, state representative, you know, uh, U.S. congressman, whatever, uh, a candidate who supports the fair tax could run on up against somebody who's going to try to demagogue the fair tax. The yeah, that, that's the worst thing about the fair tax. It is so easily demagogued with uh, half truths and actually zero truths. But not by our audience, is it? No, that no. Was, that's folks, why they listen to us. We know uh, they exactly. know the score here. Yes, you're, but that's not going to stop certain politicians from trying to do it. Yeah. Pull the wool over your eyes concerning the fair tax. Now, in 2010, they did some uh, research on fair tax candidates, candidates that supported the fair tax, and candidates that not only supported it but uh, aggressively defended their stance on the on the uh, fair tax. All right, those people, those candidates that were adamantly in favor and spoke in favor of the fair tax, did very well in their elections. Those people that uh, said they liked the fair tax but they didn't really talk about it much, they didn't fare quite as quite as easily, you know, tw- quite as well. So. If you're a fair tax candidate, you have to stick up for yourself. And, of course, it's easy to do because if you understand the fair tax, you know it's superior, certainly to what we have now, and against the flat tax also. Yeah, but you have to know the slings and arrows that are going to be slung and thrown at you. Yeah, so, so that's what so, we're going to so do. So we're going to have some fun here. Uh, yeah, yeah. Y- you, Ron, get to be the fair tax candidate. <laughs> That's what I figured. <laughs> I get to sling arrows at you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so be prepared for to hear uh, some, if not all, of this in political ads coming to you shortly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You got your steel underwear on. Are we ready to go? Yeah. Let's. Let me have it. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, my opponent wants to add a twenty-three percent sales tax to everything you buy, including groceries and medicine. That's awful. Now, if my opponent understands the fair tax, he knows that that's not accurate. Everything is not going to go up by 23%, okay? Uh, It's going to go up somewhat, but you're also going to have more money in your pocket. Now, apparently, my opponent uh, uh, favors and is just in love with the IRS, and he also loves the payroll deduction tax, which is the most regressive tax we have that hurts the working poor. Now, if my opponent really understands the fair tax, he knows that the fair tax is going to remove the payroll taxes, the income tax, and people are going to get a prebate. So, yes, although prices will go up somewhat, and we can't say exactly how much, people are going to have more spending cash. Now, what is it about my opponent that he loves the IRS so much? I mean, what, you know, I, I just don't understand. The fair tax is going to be better for everybody. Everybody is going to have more spending power or a relative purchasing power under the fair tax. So my opponent needs to brush up on his facts. My fellow Americans, <laughs> everybody knows that a sales tax is regressive. It hits the poor much harder than it hits the rich and the fair tax is a sales tax. It is regressive. It will hurt the poor. And if you vote for me, I'll make sure that doesn't happen to you. Yes. If you vote for him, you're going to keep the IRS. You're going to keep payroll deductions. And you're going to keep uh, all the scandals that go along with the IRS. Okay. The, the most regressive tax we have, as I already mentioned, is the payroll tax. All right. That hurts the people that can least afford it. Uh, people who are earning big paychecks, you know, you got a great job and you're earning a couple hundred thousand a year. Uh, the payroll tax, you know, like uh, uh, FICA and so forth, that's not that big a deal for you. But for people who are just getting by, that is a big deal for them. We're going to get rid of it with the fair tax. It'll be gone. Uh, so uh, the, the sales tax, a normal sales tax is regressive, a normal sales tax, but the fair tax does away with that by the prebate, okay? 
the that the prebate or the family consumption allowance makes sure that no household pays taxes on the basic necessities or i should say that you're reimbursed when you buy a food clothing and shelter for your family the basic necessities you will be reimbursed for the fair tax you pay on those commodities all right just based on the size of your household it's very simple has nothing to do with income the size of your household you got four people in the household you're going to get 614 dollars a month all right i don't know why my opponent doesn't like the idea of you getting another 614 dollars a month to help you pay for uh, pay for those things but uh um but that's what it is nobody is going to be hurt the 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 fair tax is not regressive actually the prebate makes it progressive so that the people who spend more pay more it's just that simple ladies and gentlemen my opponent who wants to add this 23 percent tax to the cost of everything you buy also wants to create a new big government bureaucracy to deal with this thing and i ladies and gentlemen am against more government bureaucracy if you vote for the fair tax you are voting for more bureaucracy and that's not good well if you're against the fair tax which i assume means that that you're in favor of the current tax then you love the irs all right there's no other way to put it all right my candidate is in love with the irs and all the problems that go along with the irs and he loves the april 15th deadline so what's it going to be are we going to get rid of the irs or not well under the fair tax we will plus how are we going to collect it? Is there going to be this huge government agency that goes in and checks out all your spending habits, follows you to the store, and makes sure that you pay your sales tax, you know, the fair tax on everything you buy? No, that's ridiculous. 45 states have sales tax right now. There's not, it's not a big deal. It's collected at the cash register or when you pay your bills online or whatever. It's, collect, it's collected automatically when you pay for stuff. And it's collected by the vendor and the vendor then passes it on to the state taxing authority and then under the fair tax the state taxing authority collects all this stuff it's all done by computers and then it's passed on to the u.s treasury there'll be some kind of a sales tax agency in the federal government first off the irs will go away because without an income tax we don't need the irs secondly this agency is only responsible for making sure that they get their money from the states and the states will be responsible for getting the money from the vendors which they're doing right now so the infrastructure is in place to collect the fair tax there's five states that don't have an income uh, a sales tax right now they will have the choice of instituting this sales tax on their own having a neighboring state administer for uh, administer their sales tax for them or having the U.S. government come in and set up a sales tax for them. I suggest you don't do the latter, you know, based on their track record. So there will be no huge government agency. The agency will only be responsible for making sure that the sales tax money comes in. No tax returns, no IRS, no April 15th, no audits, no IRS audits. All that stuff is gone. The fair tax is so simple, it's... it's it, it, it makes a fool out of my uh, candidate or my opponent my fellow americans i stand for fairness i'm in your corner i want to fight for you and let me tell you my opponent wants to reduce the corporate income tax to zero zilch nothing under his idea if you elect him Corporations will not pay their fair share. They won't be paying anything at all. Vote for me. I will make sure that doesn't happen and that corporations will pay their fair share if I'm your congressman. Right. My opponent is for taxation at any level. Uh, no, under the fair tax, the corporations will not pay the fair tax on business-to-business -business purchases. Why? Because if they're doing that now, I mean, they have all kinds of compliance costs, the cost of the tax code itself, uh, the ca cost of researching the tax code to make sure they're taking uh, every legal loophole and exemption that's out there. All that stuff is very expensive for them. And who ends up paying for it, my friends? You and I do.
And everybody knows that, all right? So those people that say that corporations must pay their fair share are being disingenuous, all right? Because every time a company bears an expense for doing business, it gets rolled into the price of the product. Or they have to cut expenses like reducing labor, so somebody loses their job. Or they reduce dividends to the, to the shareholders, so a person gets less money. No matter how you slice it, when you, when you add an expense or a tax to a corporation, it is people who end up paying for it. Always and forever. That's the way it's going right now. So we're going to make it simple. Business-to-business -business purchases under the fair tax will not be subject to the fair tax. The fair tax will always be paid by the final consumer. Uh, because in a way, in effect, that's what's happening now. So... Final consumer is going to pay for it. Now, what happens when these businesses don't have this expense? First off, they don't have to deal with the corporate income tax. Secondly, they don't have to deal with complying with the tax code. Uh, there's a whole bunch of uh, uh, tax accountants and so forth that they're not going to need. Those people will have to find gainful employment doing something constructive. But corporations are going to find themselves with a windfall, all right? So they're going to create more jobs. They're going to give salary increases. They're going to do research and development, maybe. You know, they're going to have some extra cash with which to build their business because if you're in business, you want to build your business. That's that's the way it goes. So we're, the corporations... Well, you could say that the corporations don't pay their fair share no matter what politicians say, all right? So the fair tax just makes it simple. The fair, under the fair tax, corporations will not pay the fair tax on business-to-business -business expenses. The final consumer will. Corporations are going to expand. Jobs are going to expand. The economy is going to grow. It's going to be very good. And there's a lot of research to, to prove this. Ladies and gentlemen, you have just heard my opponent. He is clearly in the hip pocket of big business and big corporations. He's going to give them this huge windfall, not make them pay any taxes at all, and I guarantee you that those corporations will not reduce their prices. They will continue to gouge you, vote for me, and that will not happen. That's right. Vote for my opponent, and he'll keep the taxes right up there, okay? Uh, under, the, uh, under the fair tax, as I said, uh, there will be no business-to-business -business taxes charged. Uh, there will be no income tax to comply with. Uh, there will be no compliance costs. And yes, uh, expenses for corporations are going to come way, way down. Their paperwork is going to reduce between 80 and 90 percent. That's a huge savings, all right? So um, apparently my opponent thinks that they're, they're going to take this savings and they're going to take it to their giant corporate mattress and stuff it under there, all right? They're not going to, because he's saying they're not going to reduce their prices. They're just going to keep that money and hide it from us, all right? That's not the way a business works, okay? A business has to stay competitive. If two businesses are making windows and they, they both get a windfall under the fair tax and one decides to keep their prices high, and take the extra profits, and the other one decides to keep uh, to lower their prices, and thereby gain a competitive edge in the market. Guess what's going to happen? The peop the company that's selling similar quality but a less expensive product is going to gain market share, and they're going to have a huge advantage. And then the other company that thought they were going to make a killing by keeping their prices high, they're going to scramble and. You cannot escape the competitive market forces, all right? Competition will dictate what happens to these companies. Now, a company might choose to invest in uh, research and development. They might, uh, they might want to give their employees a better uh, pay package and benefit package. They might want to uh, reduce their price. They're going to do what's best for the company, but they're going to decide based on competitive market forces, not on some government bureaucrat, okay? So under the fair tax, corporations are going to be unleashed, 
and they're going to have a lot less to worry about with the IRS and tax returns and record keeping and compliance costs. All that stuff is going away, and it's going to be it's going to be a great day in America because corporations are going to expand. They will. If necessary, they will reduce their prices or they'll invest it in research and development. They're going to do what it takes to stay in business and maintain a profit. Because if they can't stay in business, if they can't make a profit, there's no point in staying in business. So, yes, they will reduce their prices because there's competition. We just can't think of them as one giant corporation across the United States. There are millions of of corporations and they will do what's necessary to stay in business. Now, now, ladies and gentlemen, my opponent who supports this cockamamie tax scheme that is going to be fraud, fraud, fraud. Just rife with fraud if this uh, my opponent has his way with the tax system. If you do not like government abuse and waste and fraud, vote for me. Well, I'd like to see the uh, news reports on the current state of fraud in the state sales taxes. All right, we got 45 states that have a sales tax. Where are the constant stories how people are avoiding the sales tax at the state level? Where are they? I haven't seen any. I've seen a lot of stories about abuse by the IRS. I've seen a lot of stories about uh, Congress people uh, submitting bills to modify the tax code. All right, I've seen a, a lot of stories about. Uh, 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 Oh, civil asset forfeiture where the IRS swoops in and takes your money because they think you're making deposits, uh, cash deposits illegally. Where are the stories about the sales tax fraud going on? Where are the stories about somebody who goes into one of these big box stores, Target, Sears, Walmart, and they go up and buy a TV and they slip the guy a fiver and say, hey, don't don't cash don't uh, tally up the tax on this, will you? That that's not going to happen. You'll be laughed out of uh, out of the store. All right. There there is no fr- it's very very difficult. Now, if you want to talk about fraud, the current income tax is the king and queen of fraud. I mean, there is a tax gap of close to six hundred billion dollars. Six hundred b billion. Dollars. That's taxes that are supposed to be paid to the IRS, but they're not because people are able to avoid it. I shouldn't say avoid, evade it. That's tax evasion. Talk about fraud. And then the IRS admits that their computers are, there's attempted hacks on the IRS computers a million times a day trying to get your basic information, social security number, name and address, People are victimized by ID theft all the time because the IRS can, computer can't keep them all out. Talk about fraud. We have the the income tax is the best source of fraud right now. A sales tax is very difficult to defraud. How do you do it? You go up to the store, you buy something, you pay it, you walk out of the store with your item. That's it. It's that simple. Huh. Ladies and gentlemen, listen. My opponent, again, wants to add a 23% tax to the cost of everything you buy, again, including groceries and medicine. That is going to create a vast underground economy. The government is going to not get the money that they need to operate. We cannot have this happen. And if you don't want that to happen, vote for me. Yeah, yeah, this uh, underground economy, uh, I'm not sure... Um, we have several, uh, like I said, we have 45 states that have a sales tax right now on new items. Um, where's the underground economy? All right. W- what we do have under the current system, under the state sales tax, is you have an item that is purchased and you pay the state sales tax on it. Let's say a car. You buy a new car and you keep it th- three or four or five years and then you sell it to somebody, maybe a relative, maybe somebody else. And when you sell it, you have to collect the sales tax on that again and send it to the state. So there's double dipping right now, all right? Under, under the current system, uh, you're, you're not gonna have that situation. The sales tax is so simple. Where, where are these great underground economies? Are you gonna go buy groceries in an underground economy? 
If you want to buy a new car, you're going to go to some sleazily, uh, you know, midnight rendezvous with somebody to buy a car? No. I mean, this underground economy is a myth. Uh, we already have all this structure in place, and the sales tax is not going to make it that big a deal. Uh, you're you're going to, you'll see almost no difference. And keep in mind, as we said before, not only will the you have to deal with the sales tax, but you're going to get the prebate and increased uh, increased income change in your pocket. So buying stuff is going to be a lot easier under the, under the, under the fair tax. There's not going to be this underground economy. That's a myth, and it's completely ups, unsubstantiated. I think my candidate is being is playing uh, fast and loose with the uh, facts here. My fellow Americans, we must keep the promises that we have made to our seniors. Seniors that are dependent upon Social Security and Medicare for their very existence. This cockamamie tax scheme that my opponent favors would end Social Security and Medicare. I will not let that happen. Yeah, well, actually, if my, uh, my, uh, my candidate, or yeah, my opponent here, had actually done his homework and read the uh, fair tax bill, which, by the way, is only about 130 pages, double-spaced, all right? It's not one of these multi-thousand-dollar pages, all right? It says in the legislation that a certain percentage, is right around 35% of the proceeds from the fair tax must go to Social Security and Medicare. Now, think about this. You make a purchase, whether it's for a jackknife or a new TV or a new car or a new house, whatever it is, you make a purchase, the seller collects the, the fair tax on that, passes it on to the state, passes it on to the federal government. About 35% of the fair tax collected on that item must go to Social Security and Medicare. That means every time somebody makes a purchase of a new product or a service in this country, they are supporting Social Security and Medicare. Now, right now, who pays for Social Security and Medicare? The people that get a paycheck. The people that get a W-2, all right, they're the only ones supporting Social Security and Medicare. The people who make uh, uh, have investments and get dividends from those investments, they're not paying Social Security, not paying it at all. So a lot of people are escaping Social Security, uh, supporting Social Security. Under the fair tax, every time a purchase of a new product or, or service takes place in this country, it will be supporting Social Security and Medicare. We will have a more stable uh, base of fu funding for Social Security and Medicare than we have ever had in this country. It's going to resurrect that program, and, it, and it's going to be it's really going to take care of our seniors. So that's another myth that is ups, unsubstantiated. My opponent really needs to do his homework and understand what we're dealing with here because he has demonstrated that he really doesn't know what he's talking about. My fellow Americans, this crazy tax plan, 23% to the cost of everything you buy that my opponent supports, it just simply needs more study. It is such a radical plan that we just cannot implement something that crazy and that far off the wall without more study to make sure that it's going to work, and I don't think it will. And there's a prime example of a, of a candidate for office grasping at straws, all right? When everything else fails, tell them it needs more study. Uh, actually, the fair tax has been legislation in Congress every two years, first, uh, first introduced in 1999. There's been over $20 million worth of research, $20 million of privately funded research to investigate and examine every aspect of the fair tax. You know, how much should it be? How is it collected? How is it going to affect this industry and so forth? So, um, no, it's... It's got lots of research behind it. It's been studied and studied, and, and again, all privately funded. Uh, the people, the Americans for Fair Taxation, have really done their homework. Uh, and anything you need to know about the fair tax, you go to fairtax.org, and it, the questions are there. They have a section on frequently asked questions, and if you have a question about the fair tax, probably somebody else asked that question before. And the answer to it is there. 
They even have some, some videos on uh, the, the different aspects of the fair tax. So again, my opponent is grasping at straws here as he's going down for the third time. And, uh, he, you know, he wants to delay it by studying it more. In other words, study it to death. All right. Apparently, my opponent just loves the current tax system. He loves the IRS. He loves the payroll taxes. He loves the, uh, the burden that's put, put on companies that we end up paying for. He just loves all this stuff. Why is my opponent just so much in love with the current tax system? I don't understand it. Get with something new here. The fair tax is the way to go. Fair tax is a 21st century tax system. We, we need not be burdened by this old, old 20th century tax system. My fellow Americans, vote for me because my opponent is a sleazy, dishonest jerk. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what it comes down to. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. <laughs> oh, mercy. And I, I'll tell you what, we're, we're having a little fun with this, but a lot of these points that, that uh, we brought up here, I have actually heard in actual campaign ads used against uh, candidates that, uh, that do support the fair tax. And it's clear that the guys that are taking pot shots of it have no clue what they're talking about. Yeah, it, 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 and if they do understand the fair tax and they're purposely misrepresenting it then they're liars i mean there's just no other way yeah you can say they're disingenuous or they made an error no they're liars <laughs> there's no way to get around it <laughs> oh mercy so, so what can we do we the people who want the fair tax who want the irs to go away who want to get a tax refund every month who want the full gross amount of our paychecks every week what can we do to make that happen well um of course, we mentioned the fairtax.org website. Uh, lots of information there. Uh, anything you can think, if you have a question on anything, you know, it, it's right there. Um, also, bigsolution.org. This is the website for, you might say, activism. If you want to help out, if you really, really want to get rid of the IRS and the current income tax, go to bigsolution.org and help out. Connect, support, contribute and build and the build is build up a database help us build up our database there's another one pop fox p-o-p-v-o-x and on a, a recent webinar i heard larry walters uh, mention about pop fox and he came up with something that i feel i should have thought of myself but anyways pop fox you can go on and you can weigh in on hr 25 the fair tax bill in the house and S-155, the fair tax bill in the Senate, and you can you know, say why you're in favor of it and so forth. But in addition to that, you can go on, uh, look up other tax reform bills and say why they're unnecessary. I've got one here that I found on the Internet. Uh, there's a, uh, a congressman in Illinois who is uh, proposing H.R. 5053, Preventing IRS Abuse and Protecting Free Speech Act. Now, that sounds great, but... In reality, it's just adding more to the current tax code. You're just adding a few hundred more pages. And what is the IRS going to do with this? Congress passes a law or resolution or an act that says you can't do this anymore. So far, the IRS has not been real good about conforming to uh, basic principles. Yeah, so, may I suggest that the best way to prevent the IRS from abusing people is to get rid of it entirely? Yeah, <laughs> let's. There's just no question about it. If we make it unnecessary to have an IRS, they can't abuse us. It's that simple. Again, the the beauty of the fair tax is in uh, is its simplicity. And again, if you'd like to get in touch with us here at Fair Tax Power Radio, the email address, thefairtaxguys, all one word, at gmail.com. And our Facebook page as well. You can like us there. You can ask questions. You can share stories. If you've got an IRS horror story, we'd love to hear it. So we'd appreciate your feedback here on Fair Tax Power Radio. Yeah, so make sure you uh, uh, try to communicate with the world-famous Fair Tax Guys. And that's going to wrap it up. Do it to it for this edition. Thank you so much for being with us. I'm Bob Paxton. And I'm Ron Malero. The Fair Tax Guys, again, reminding you that the Fair Tax is America's big solution. And once you understand it, you'll demand it. Fair Tax is coming. Don't stand-